Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. Guess what? I am in Tokyo, Japan, and as you guys know, I was born and raised here, so I come back here often, and there's a lot to see, so I have a lot to share with you in coming days. But I wanted to come and revisit a very important topic that I talked about a couple months ago, which is what car to buy. But this time, I'm gonna do the reverse of it, which is what cars not to buy. What kind of cars should you avoid to make sure that you end up with the right choice, right selection, and you end up with a type of car that can be happy for many years to come. So let me come up with 10 important factors or 10 important things you should consider so that you can avoid buying cars that you won't be happy with or cars that might give you trouble down the road. Let's go. Welcome back. So here I am in Japan, and as you guys know, I love many things about Japan, especially automobiles. And I know that you might automatically assume all cars that are built in Japan are safe to buy and they're reliable long term. Well, that used to be the case, but not anymore. So for example, if you were to buy a Toyota RAV4 that's built in Woodstock, Ontario, Canada, which is a mature plant, it could be more reliable than buying, let's say, a brand new model, like let's say like a Toyota Crown from a Japanese factory, because it's a brand new product and it might give you some teething issues in the first year. So you kind of have to keep in mind that generally speaking, Japanese brands built in Japanese factories are pretty safe bet just because they have a really good experience and most of the factories are very mature. But as you know, recently with the recalls from Toyota and also from Honda and some other brands, we know that is not the case anymore. So how do you avoid buying cars that might give you trouble or might cost you too much down the road? Well, let me start off with my first advice, which is not to buy any cars in the first year of production or very first year of the sale. It doesn't matter if the cars are built in Japan or Mexico or North America or Europe. It doesn't matter what brand it is. Just basically don't buy the first year of that product and you could avoid a lot of problems. And that includes even some proven brands like Lexus because again, as you know, some of these proven products have had some recalls that surprised all of us. So avoid the first year, that's my first rule of thumb. What about the second point? Well, the second point is somewhat related to the first one, and that is don't even buy the second year of a product if that car or SUV or truck is all new, especially if it's coming from an all new factory. And again, this is regardless of any kind of geographic location. So it doesn't matter if it's Asia or Europe or North America. If it's a brand new product, all new, and potentially even coming from an all new factory, don't even buy the second year, wait for the third year, or better yet, wait for the face left year, which is usually fourth or fifth year. And I know that's a long time to wait for something that you might want to buy right away. But honestly, if you wait two years at least, maybe even third year or fourth year, you know for sure that product is mature and will be most likely reliable. Even if that product has not been reliable traditionally, or if the brand is not known for long-term reliability, they tend to get things fixed and the products are actually quite decent. So that's my second rule. The third thing to keep in mind is not to buy any products from a brand new automotive company, i.e. startup companies. And there have been a number of startup companies. Some are more mature like a Rivian, but there's also all kinds of new brands all coming through the pipelines the last couple of years as well as into the next few years. And I would just actually wait at least five years to buy from a brand new automaker. After five years, most likely they're mature and they've got their things sorted out, then it might be safe to buy, assuming the, re the reliability data and the record shows that they are reliable. Those are something you have to check as well. But anyway, don't buy from a startup, wait five years. The fourth point is to do with the servicing, parts, supply chain, and network. So don't buy from a brand that is not well represented in your country or possibly in your city. So for example, trying to buy an Alfa Romeo product in North America is probably not a good idea. There's not a lot of dealership out here. The brand is not very reliable to begin with. And if you live far away from a dealer network, you're gonna keep on going there if you have to fix problems or there's some defects. However, if you were to buy Alfa Romeo in Italy or Milan, close to the head office, it might not be a reliable product, but you're probably okay because it's easy to get the parts the dealers are generous and they're everywhere and you're close to the source of the actual brands. So you know it depends a lot on which country you live in, but every country has a strong presence of a particular brand 
and then sometimes a very weak presence. So obviously in Japan, all the Japanese brands are well represented, and actually they're quite well represented in the U.S. as well. But if you were to buy, let's say, an American product in Japan right here, not a good idea because there are very few dealerships and it's really hard to get parts. So think of the location or uh, geographic area you live in and make sure that you have a strong network of dealership that's accessible and very close to you with uh, easy to get parts and supply chain. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. Don't buy brands that are weakly represented in your country or in your area or in your city. The fifth point is an easy and obvious one, which is don't buy any products with a high markup, which also means likely not buying it the first year or two of production because newer products tend to have a high markup. But what people don't realize is that you might want to really buy something because it's cool and it just came out and you maybe don't mind paying the high markup. Well, three, four years down the road, it probably won't be all that popular. The markups will be gone and the resale value might have tanked. So you don't really want to pay the MSRP plus the markup and then you kept it for five years and you realize that now they're abundant and you just don't get the kind of resale value you wanted. So uh, again, this goes kind of with a rule number one, rule number two, but if there's a lots of markup or even a medium level of markup, just don't buy it. I don't think any products really deserve to be purchased with a lot of markup. Number six point is to do with your decision making process. Some of us have cars that maybe have broken down or your needs have changed and you really need to buy something quick, but that particular car is not available. So for example, maybe you're trying to buy a RAV4 Prime or plug-in hybrid and there's still a long waiting list or even the Land Cruiser that I purchased had a long waiting list. And you might decide that, okay, I can't get them because they're not available. So I'll buy something else, product ABC, and you just might not be happy with that. So if it's not a super long wait, go and rent a car or go and borrow a friend's car or family car or um, maybe even buy a lot cheaper car, something that you can then trade in later. But I think it's better to find ways to uh, get to the actual car you want to buy, especially if it's only two or three months away. You might get away by taking public transportation, renting a car or borrowing a car from Turo or from your friend or family. And that way you can order a car and the car you really want will arrive in a couple of months. I, of course, understand if the car will not come for a year or longer because it's a high demand car. You may not want to wait that long, but I always say to my family and friends that it's always better to wait longer time to get the one you really want versus buy something in a rush because most likely you won't be happy with it and you're gonna end up selling that car and losing money anyway. So be patient, wait for the right product, wait for the one you want. The seventh thing is something I also talked about in my previous video, which was a video about how to buy the right car based on 10 factors. And that is, don't let the emotion run over your decision. Now this may be quite obvious, but uh, once again, as I mentioned before, apply the 80-20 rules. Buy a car that you need 80% of the time, not 20% of the time. So if you were to say, hey, I don't really need a minivan, I just really need a, a compact SUV, but twice a year my, my friends or my family members fly over and visit me, and I need a big minivan, so I'm gonna buy a minivan. Well, that doesn't make any sense because 80% of the time you don't need it. If you need a minivan or a truck to tow something once in a while, go and rent it. It'll be way cheaper and it wouldn't be much of a compromise that way. So once again, make sure that you focus on practicality and the functionality of a vehicle, something that you need 80% of the time, and don't buy something that you might need once in a while. This just supports all of the previous things I talked about. Use 80-20 rule. So hang in there, I've got a few more advice for you. The eighth thing to keep in mind is not to let your past dictate your future decisions. So for example, if you were to have purchased a Hyundai 10, 15 years ago and you just didn't have a good experience, you might say, hey, I'll never buy a Hyundai product again. Well, that would be a poor decision because many of the Korean products, including the Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis have done really well in their reliability data and reliability tests. And in fact, some of them are more reliable than mainstream Japanese brands. So just because you had a bad experience with something 10 years ago doesn't mean they are still bad right now. And even some of the startup brands like Rivian has lots of problems in the beginning, but now they're pretty reliable. So don't rely too much on your past uh, experience, especially if it's from a long time ago. Look at the current information and then make the right choice. Don't let the past dictate your future purchases. 
the ninth point is an important one and I talked about this in my previous video as well but make sure that you are buying based on a total life cycle cost of a car so as an example you have a purchase price of a car but then you have also a maintenance cost insurance cost maybe even parking cost fuel cost and so forth so you've got a whole bunch of different costs so you might come across cars that are really cheap to buy because there's a big rebate on it but maybe it's very expensive to maintain and maybe the insurance is high then the total cost might be actually high you're not saving any money on the other hand you might find a car that's a bit expensive to buy but it has a really good long-term reliability very low maintenance insurance is also low so over a course of five to ten years of ownership it could be a very wise purchase so make sure that you look at the whole life cycle cost not just the purchase price of a car take into account all the other stuff and then make the right decision the tenth and final device is to don't buy cars with lots of known problems based on actual data go and take a look at the forums where people are talking about their ownership go and look at all kinds of data from consumer report jd power the number of other companies as well that publish data about reliability about safety records gather some data gather some information and then make the right decision it might even be worth typing up some messages in the forum to say hey i'm thinking of buying product abc let's say toyota tacoma have you guys had any issues or problems this is something i should know and you'll be surprised how helpful these forums are whether they are a separate forum or sometimes you find them in facebook or even some other social media groups and you'll be surprised how much they want to help you so gather some information gather the facts and data and then you will kind of know which cars not to buy and which cars are okay to buy this is kind of like the mirror image of the video i made before which was which cars to buy 10 factors this one is which cars not to buy 10 factors so think about all the factors you should be able to buy the right car for the right price and be very happy for many years to come so i hope this video was helpful again i'm in japan lots of cool things to show you down the road but in the meantime i hope you can give me a thumbs up make some comments and if you haven't done so yet would you kindly subscribe as well until next video i'm signing off for now thank you so much Thank you.